Great. Okay. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this year's State of the Town Address. If I could ask everyone to please rise as we invite the American Legion Post 86 Honor Guard to post the colors. And I would invite Braintree's Veteran of the Year and Past Post Commander John Pellos to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the Pledge of, the pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if everybody could remain standing for this evening's national anthem, sung by Braintree's very own Declan Houghton. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the And if I could ask everyone to remain standing for another brief moment. Uh, today we remember Braintree Police Lieutenant Gregory Principe and Sergeant Ernest Across, who were killed in the line of duty 32 years ago today. We remember them and send our condolences to their family and take this moment of silence in their memory as well as for all of those who serve locally and abroad. Thank you. Thank you very much again to the Legion Post 86. Everyone could please take a seat. <sighs> Thank you very much, everyone, for being here this evening for this year's State of the Town in what is a wholly renovated building here at 400 Wood Road. I would encourage everybody, if you have an opportunity before you leave, take a, take a look at the photos behind me, take a look at the photos to my right, uh, to see some of the incredible development and some of the firsts that we've experienced over the course of the last year. Before we get started with the rest of the program, I do want to take this opportunity to recognize some of our distinguished guests with us this evening. We have with us Senator Keenan and Senator Timulty. 
We have Sheriff McDermott and District Attorney Morrissey, the Chair of the Chamber of Commerce, Denver Gibbs. We have from the School Committee, Chairwoman Lisa fisk Heger and members Kathy Tuffy and Kelly Cobblemere. From the Town Council, we have Councilors Charlie Ryan, Stephen O'Brien, and Joseph Reynolds. We also have with us Chair of the Planning Board, Aaron Joyce, and several of our department heads, as well as our town clerk, Jim Casey. I want to recognize Jim Arsenault, the director of the DPW, Cindy DePina from Human Resources, Ed Spellman, our finance director, Lorraine C., our procurement and grants officer, police chief Mark DuBois, fire chief James O'Brien, Melissa santucci Razi of planning and community development, Mary Beth McGrath of municipal licenses and inspections, and Terry Stano from local favorite, the Thayer Public Library. And if I missed anybody, my sincerest apologies, but on behalf of the mayor and I, I just want to welcome everybody again here this evening. The, excuse me, the state of the town is a long-standing tradition that offers us an opportunity to reflect back on the past year and what a year it's been and look forward to the successes of our future. Now, none of that would have been possible without the leadership of our mayor. And his hard work, it's a little emotional, this is a special evening for all of us. His hard work, dedication, and commitment to this great town has known no boundary. And he has provided a solid foundation for our success. And it is with great honor and my privilege to introduce our mayor, Charles Kokoris. Thank you, Nicole. I don't know if everybody knows, but Nicole is um, leaving us, and uh, I should be the one up here crying. To be honest with you. Um, I want to recognize my family, my uh, lovely wife Denise, my son Michael, my mother-in-law Mary. I here tonight. Thank you for all your support, Denise, over the years. Um, I remember way back when, when I decided I was going to run for office, and uh, we had no idea the journey that we were going to have, and it's been, we've been blessed, so thank you, sweetheart. <clears throat> Good evening to everyone tonight. I want to welcome our veterans, our honor guard, town councilors, school committee members, department head, town employees, distinguished guests and Braintree residents to the State of the Town Address. You all represent what makes Braintree such an incredible place to call our home. I want to extend a special thank you to the American Legion Honor Guard. Our veterans have given so much, and I remain committed to honoring them in our community. For those who gave the ultimate sacrifice in 2022, we adopted a tax exemption for Gold Star mothers and fathers, and our Gold Star families have suffered so much on behalf of this great nation. For that, I say thank you. And you will always be, you will always have a home here in Braintree. This year, we in introduced the Veterans Banner Program these banners are visible all throughout the town. This gesture is the least we can do to thank our veterans for their service, and I'm proud to announce that working with our Veterans Services Agent, Vincent Fontaine, we will be able to expand this program by adding additional locations throughout town, honoring even more of our veterans for their sacrifice. I would also like to give a special thanks to Hillco Redevelopment Partners, specifically Executive Vice President Ben Spira and Head of Investments Andrew Chusid for hosting our event tonight. The relationship we have forged with Hillco in this incredible new state-of-the-art building is a great example of what we can accomplish 
when we take advantage of an opportunity to develop partnerships. We will be welcoming Braintree's first life science tenant, Integra, here, and I am confident that this is the first of many opportunities for successful life science growth in Braintree. In addition to Integra, Wood Road has seen the construction of a new electronic billboard at 290 Wood Road. This is several years in the making. I can also report that as I stand here today, we have received the first payment, which is in the office, in the amount of $1 million, and we will continue to collect revenue totaling $2.5 million over the next 20 years. You may have seen it on the way up the street. I was very excited to see it lit up. This year, we also took the first step towards redevelopment of the property at 60 Columbian Street. The lot totaling 69.1 acres is now permitted for 272,550 square feet of flexible research and lab space with light manufacturing, GMP, and warehouse space. In addition to the buildings on site, the redevelopment will include areas of open space, recreation, and publicly accessible trails, as well as Braintree's very first dog park. A lot of dogs out there, right? Come on. <clears throat> I've been talking about it for a long time. After more than two decades of planning, permitting, and design, we have broken ground on the Tritown Water Treatment Plant that will replace two smaller existing plants built in the 1930s. This new 12.5 million gallon state-of-the-art facility will continue to provide PFAS free water and allow Braintree, Randolph and Holbrook to more efficiently serve their residents while benefiting from the shared cost of construction and operations. Taking advantage of opportunities from, for outside financing, the cost of the project is fully eligible for funding through the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, Department of Environmental Protection Drinking Water State Re Revolving Fund, including a 0% interest loan and a 6.6% debt forgiveness on the entire loan and includes a 20% subsidy with ARPA funds in the amount of $1.5 million. Additionally, with the opening of the new plant, the Tritown District will provide the town with funding for two firefighters and one police officer, further enhancing the public safety services of our community. And I just want to make a, a note that this project started when I was a lot younger and on the Tritown Water Board, and Mayor Sullivan continued to fight for this project. And when I took over in 2020, the legislation was passed by um, our legislators that are here tonight. And I just wanted to uh, make a special note and thank Mayor Sullivan for all of the work to get us to this point so that we could, we could do the closing on it. Allen Street, which also, Allen Street will also be the site of significant redevelopment as a result of a long awaited sale of the former Braintree Elect electric light plant located at 44 Allen Street. Jim Casey would know a lot about that. Arch Communities in Wind Development has purchased the land for $1.5 million, all of which has been received. And the closing is scheduled for later this year. The site has been completely reimagined from the ground up and permitted for 56 housing units. The property will include more than 25% affordable units, workforce housing units, 
providing for widespread housing opportunities in our community. The public will also have the ability to enjoy the waterfront site from a new public river walk available to all and accessible to everyone. Just across the water at the Windjammer Cove Apartments, we also successfully designated 19 units as affordable, allowing the town to count all 73 units on the property towards our subsidized housing inventory. With the addition of the Windjammer units and the 2020 census numbers, our subsidized housing inventory total has risen to above 9.5%. And we are continuing to grow our eligible land that counts towards the general land area minimum. The redevelopment of Allen Street alone will then put us over the 10% housing unit minimum required to claim state safe harbor by production. Accessing this area will also be greatly enhanced, thanks to our state and federal partners and the opportunities they've established for grant funding. In total, the town has secured more than $5,650,000 to support the full reconstruction of Allen Street and has created an opportunity for us to make some much needed and very meaningful improvements that will benefit the neighborhood and the community as a whole. I wanted to specifically thank the Honorable Congressman Stephen Lynch, Representative Mark Cusack, Senators Walter Timothy and John Keenan for their continued advocacy at the federal and state levels and for their unwavering support here in Braintree. Thank you. Nearby on Quincy Ave, we are preparing for a full reconstruction of the infrastructure with water main replacements from Allen Street to the Quincy Line and the anticipated repaving of the roadway by our partners at the state. In the meantime, Commercial businesses on Quincy Ave continue to thrive with construction of a new 26,480 square foot dealership at 575 Quincy Ave and a 26,027 square foot dealership at 435 Quincy Ave. In addition, we all look forward to the reopening of Maria's Restaurant, a staple business in East Braintree for decades. Also, with funding through the Landing Bottleneck Grant, we will be upgrading the traffic signal infrastructure at the intersection of Quincy Ave, FL Wright Connector, and Commercial Street, as well as the intersection of Commercial Street and Brookside Road. These improvements will include the installation of new traffic signal controllers and vehicle detection system, as well as optimization of signal timing at each location based on recent traffic data. The project will also introduce coordination between two traffic signals in Braintree with two single signals in Weymouth, resulting in a significant positive impact on traffic in the area of the landing and allowing vehicles and pedestrian traffic to move through the area more efficiently, something I know we all look forward to. These projects will result in positive changes in our infrastructure, but there is more work to be done across town to continue improving our sidewalks, roadways, and water and sewer lines. Working with the Boston Regional Metro Metropolitan Planning Organization, 
we will be conducting a study to examine the Route 37 highway corridor to identify specific transportation issues and concerns regarding safety, mobility, access, and traffic operations while also establishing a vision for the corridor's long-term redevelopment. I am committed to ensuring that the study provides for multiple opportunities for, the pub for public participation and that various means of communication and outreach are employed to make sure that the final product takes into account all of our residents' needs as they travel through this high traffic area, where they are, whether they are on foot, bicycle, or car, in order to provide safe access to businesses in the area. Braintree's future development, future is, Braintree's future is dependent on the strength of our infrastructure. To that end, I am committed to continue funding this essential work and have secured over $13 million in total to ensure that our infrastructure remains strong and fully operational for decades to come. This year, that will include paving of approximately six miles of roadway and three miles of sidewalk, one and a half miles of water main improvements, and the implementation of a water system infrastructure and capital improvements plan Looking forward, we will be completing water main improvements on Peach Street in the summer of 2024. Additionally, the Institute for Human-Centered Design is in the final stages of completing the transition plan, which will identify areas for improvement to further ensure that Braintree continues to be an inclusive community and accessible to all. I have also set aside funding to conduct a town-wide sidewalk inventory and capital improvement plan that when complete will help prioritize the need for repairs and allow the Department of Public Works to further increase the mileage of sidewalks eligible for repair including in areas along roadways that have already been resurfaced under the former roads program. Recognizing the need for increased intention, attention to our sidewalks, the fiscal year 23 capital plan and the fiscal 24 operating budget will also include a proposed funding for a new paving machine and sidewalk crew greater control in scheduling, pride in ownership, a reduction in costs associated with performing the work are just a few of the benefits we will see by bringing this work in-house. We have already begun to see some of these benefits as a result of the consolidation of the town and school maintenance divisions. Under the leadership of Mike McGurdy, the facilities department and custodial staff have worked together with school administration and principals to identify the priority needs of our school buildings. For example, the department has replaced 260 feet of underground main steam lines at Highlands and Hollis. Also, to enhance the public health and safety of students at Hollis, staff installed a new commercial dishwasher for use in the cafeteria. At Braintree High School, the department identified an urgent need for a new hot water heating system and undertook and completed the process of installing a wholly new domestic hot water heating system without any impact to the existing system. In total, the department has responded to over 360 service calls from personnel in the schools. Additionally, the department has implemented a district-wide in-house carpet cleaning 
and floor refinishing program. An abatement, asbestos abatement and monitoring program, and most importantly, a preventative maintenance program to ensure that our schools are in the best possible shape for our students, faculty, and staff. We are so fortunate to have such a hardworking group of educators providing the greatest public education in our district, and I am committed to continuing to enhance our school buildings to further enhance the educational experience being provided to the children of Braintree. In addition to the infrastructure improvements in our school buildings, construction of the new South Middle School continues, and we are prepared to open the doors to our first new school since the opening of the new Braintree High School over 50 years ago, this fall of 23. With the support given by the community and the debt exclusion, we are also continuing to replace our elementary school roofs with construction scheduled to begin at Highlands, Liberty, Hollis, and Flaherty Elementary Schools later this year. With all project bids coming in under budget, we are able to continue maximizing the funds approved through the debt exclusion with anticipated roof replacements at all elementary locations. Throughout the leadership and expertise of our police and fire departments, our residents can be confident that Braintree is a safe place to call home. Recognizing an opportunity to enhance our local public safety services, we partnered with the Town of Randolph to create a regional public safety dispatch center with over $4 million in grant funding awarded by the State 911 Department. We will be redeveloping the long vacant property located at 2 JFK Memorial Drive into a state-of-the-art emergency communication center that will provide dispatch services to Braintree and Randolph through new equipment and technology at a facility designed specifically to meet the needs of public safety dispatchers. I remain committed to the safety of our residents as well as our police officers and firefighters. For years, there has been talk of the need to renovate fire headquarters. And I can now state that with funding secured, the design work nearly completed, we are closer than ever to beginning the renovations and expect to have the project out to bid in the coming months. If you're a firefighter, that is great news. <laughs> this year, I also had an opportunity to honor Chief Kenny McHugh's four decades of service to Braintree while replacing a fire truck that was originally purchased in 1998. With funding authorized as part of the fiscal year 22 capital budget, the town was able to expedite delivery of the fire truck and the Kenneth J. McHugh pumper truck went into service in November of 2022. As for our police department, we have now achieved full accreditation and received the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission Certificate of Accreditation. The Braintree Police Department has established and maintained the highest level of integrity and professionalism in order to receive this honor. And I am proud of all of the work done by the men and women of the department every day. Sustainability is also an essential part of our success. And with the support of the Community Preservation Act funding totaling 
in 2022 alone, several of our open spaces and conservation properties have undergone significant improvements so that they are available for future generations to enjoy. 2022 saw the completion of the shoreline stabilization and rehabilitation project preserving Watson Park from the impacts of erosion and flooding by stabilizing the eroding bank of the Four River and constructing a flood protection berm and rain gardens to protect the park from flooding. Also, working with our partners in Weymouth and Palmetto, we have secured funding to continue the Smelt Brook restoration project, including design and construction of a fish ladder that will allow for the passage of federally recognized species of concern, rainbow smelt. The Manadequit River Trail, which will also be enhanced through Community Preservation Act funding. The proposed trail, spanning one-third of a mile in length and made of a combination of elevated boardwalk and at-grade stabilized stone dust, will be fully ADA compliant and make its way through the Middle Street open space property. This local gem will allow the public to fully experience the Manadequit River and enjoy the surrounding area to its full potential. To continue fostering leadership among our youth and providing, providing high quality outdoor space for recreation, we have also begun, begun enhancing our fields around town. In the on-deck circle, is Delory Field at Watson Park, which if approved, will include a complete reconstruction of the infield, outfield, dugout, dugouts access, and spectator seating. Our youth sports leagues are an integral part of our community. These programs teach our children that their potential is limitless and teamwork is paramount to their future success. We will continue to work together to address our wildlife, conservation, and recreation needs through the CPC funding so that our children, our children's children, and generations to come can continue to enjoy everything Braintree's open space has to offer. The arts also saw a resurgence of opportunity this year under the volunteer direction of former art director, Heidi Hurley. The Community Arts Center provides a welcoming environment for all to tap into their creative side. With Heidi's leadership, our programs have been revitalized and expanded. Her vision and creativity has created new opportunities for all in Braintree at the Community Arts Center. Thank you, Heidi. She's here today. <laughs> the residents were clear that in order to successfully plan for our future, a master plan was a necessity. And I heard you loud and clear. And for the first time in a quarter of a century, a master plan steering committee was established and the process began in January of 22 with phase one, Braintree yesterday and today. With information gathered through focus groups, steering committees, community forums, and information tents and surveys, we were able to gather a wealth of information about our community, how we view ourselves now, and what we need in the future. With that, phase two, Braintree Tomorrow, began over the summer and included numerous in engagement activities, public input, 
steering committee meetings in another community forum. What I saw during that process confirmed that we are a community that is proud to call Braintree home and values all of the opportunities it has to offer to its residents. Phase three, achieving Braintree tomorrow, is underway. And with the vision and goals established through this process, we will be able to move to plan finalization and adoption before the end of this year. As our community plans for the future of Braintree, I have continued to utilize a fiscally conservative and responsible budgeting strategy that has strengthened our town's finances and will allow us to continue providing enhanced services for our residents. Since fiscal year 21, we have seen increases in our free cash balance. That positive trend has continued, with the current free cash certified at $8.5 million. And I am committed to continuing to grow the town's reserves to ensure a positive financial future for Braintree. We also have a strong bond rating of AA and continue to maximize our use of grant and ARPA funds to support the operating budget. Our enterprise funds also continue to thrive due to their strong fund balances. We were able to lock in water and sewer residential rates while also adding an additional tier to help reduce costs to our residential users. All of this while maintaining a retained earnings balance of $9.6 million. As we begin to prepare for fiscal year 24, I am confident that Braintree's financial outlook will only get stronger. With a continued focus on commercial redevelopment that will exceed nearly 400,000 square feet of permitted new commercial development and revitalization of long vacant properties along with sustained conservative financial management and a return to pre-pandemic revenues, our success is inevitable. And we will continue to be a place of opportunity for our businesses and residents alike. I want to thank you all for joining me this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And before I ask the post to retire the colors, I just also want to extend a thank you to the Mayor's Office staff, Kate Naughton, Director of Community Affairs, and Dan Hickey, three days in, assistant to the Mayor. Thank you both. And also thank you to the facilities team who helped put the room together, along with Hanuman, who met us and helped make sure that this was a suitable space for tonight's event. And with that, I would ask the American Legion Post 86 Honor Guard to retire the colors. Thank you.
And now we would invite everybody to join us for some light refreshments. Thank you.